The history of man's existence won't be complete if agriculture is omitted. Thus, agriculture is like oxygen to man. So many countries around the world today base their economic growth and stability on agriculture. Nigeria, as a country whose major source of revenue is crude oil, has currently seen the need to diversify to agriculture. As Nigeria gradually and hopefully saw the need for this diversification of the economy, experts locally and internationally have also seen the need to champion the course of Nigeria's economy towards agriculture since it's glaring that total dependence on crude oil is no longer visible. The United Nations, through its initiative program, has given Nigeria soccer via its intervention program such as the Livelihood Improvement Family Enterprises Niger Delta Project. Therefore, the opportunity to have the International Fund for Agricultural Development IFAD, to collaborate with the Federal Government of Nigeria is a welcome development. This welcomed development spread across the Niger Delta states of Nigeria is yielding good results. In this documentary, we are focusing on Abia State chapter of the Livelihood Improvement Family Enterprises, Niger Delta Project. This is the success story of the Abia State Life NG, a formidable team who are tirelessly making efforts to enact the vision of the project initiators. A critical investigation into the activities of Abia Life ND, piloted by Dr. Roland Unyizu, the state project coordinator, gave an insight of his visionary leadership and team playing abilities. 100 communities in Abia State were penned down but 50 communities is currently getting attention of the project intervention. How well has Abia Life ended up? We have started and um, we are not doing too bad. We are presently working in 50 communities as I guess 100 communities that were all meant to work on across the state. Uh, we've been able to select these 100 communities in 10 local government and then um, as at present the 50 communities that we're working on we've been able to identify um, 50 incubators uh, why because our, our project is such that um, we are using a model called incubator and incubating model uh, which is more of um, a model that looks at farmers who are already established or agro entrepreneurs who are already established. We we'll now identify them within these communities where they were intervening and they will help us train our direct beneficiaries who are the, our incubatees, who are these uh, young persons between the age of 18 and 35. And um, they will, after an orientation training, they will now get to these incubation centers, which are the, um, the farms of these established farmers. Now they will be there for a number of periods, ranging uh, from six months to two years, depending on the agro commodity in question. Each community has a particular agro commodity at the time that we're working on. So we've been able to identify 250 incubators work presently being empowered. And then there are different stages of uh, incubation or empowerment or training or capacity building level as we speak. In order to get a clearer view and facts on ground, there is a need to see the claims of work in progress by the Abia Life NT. This is the first set of our um, beneficiaries and very soon, in the next two months or thereabouts, we will also pick the next set of uh, beneficiaries. By then, we are done with this uh, first set that we are working with. The incubatees are the direct beneficiaries of the project. 
The process of selecting incubators and incubates for this project was done according to LifeFag standard. These choosing ones have actually lived up to expectations considering their input so far as monitored and supervised by Abia Life ND team. My name is Pastor Okesh Kutike. I am the CEO of Osikapa Abia, a rice processing center here in Bend, the local government of Abia State. I want to confirm successful training of uh, incubators. We acted as incubators and then we partnered with Life ND. It is a very welcome project. At least the persons that were given to us, we have trained them on rice processing and marketing. My name is Reverend Father Gabriel Iheke. I'm an incubator under Life ND program. This community is a Etitiama community, Mburu, and uh, I was given uh, five incubators from the beginning, now there are four. And these four has been under this training from the beginning to this moment, they are still there learning, waiting for Black ND to also equip them. My name is Mrs. Monica Okasaya. I am the incubator in charge of this farm or these chooks. Global farm limited. And we are operating under the life and the project. Which, uh, they have given us five uh, incubities working under me for uh, training. To so thank Life ND for the project for their support so far. This program, five incubators we are assigned to this farm and they have been very serious with the job. They have been coming, acquiring knowledge. So it is our belief and hope that life ending will fulfill all the promises they made, the promise of empowering them with beds, so that at the end of the program, the objectives of this program will be achieved. I'm Keshe Yeronyekura, the incubator for Amito Lumboto. And uh, I have here with me my incubators that I'm training on poultry, players and the broiler precisely. I'm doing, I'm partnering with uh, Life ND together with the uh, IFAD. The program they are doing has really impacted much on the lives of the growing youth in this community. Mrs. Lois Manganga, PhD. I am an incubator for life in the in the community of Uguna Bonita government. I am one of the incubators that uh, have incubators assigned to my farm. And uh, so far, we have been doing well. We have been able to give them a lot of the orientations they need for breeding of birds, mostly the broiler and, the broiler and layer. And the uh, life in the have been very upcoming in supporting all the activities. They have been able to give us even the working capital so that we can do the preliminary and the initial preparations for the arrival of the pets for the incubators. And the name of my farm is Meren Global Plains. Urata in the summer when people meet. So far, I'm so happy that uh, Life ND have come into my farm to help me in so many ways. And I also have five incubators with me here who are very good and kind. Well, my name is Mr. Andy Sodianawa. I'm the managing director of Three Bros Group. Uh, the, this morning, we just uh, have clock now the national. Well, I would say I will not have much to say because the life only to do so much to support us to have the people we train in. Like as I mean, thank you very much. My incubators, all of them are here and they are doing fine. The incubators were also committed in their areas of attachment. They expressed joy and satisfaction of being privileged to be selected for the project. I'm Honorable High Chief Chijio Kanyamu, Chairman of the Inogro Royal Council. Chairman, Ehinogro Council of Chiefs and nominated representative of Ehinogro. 
ancient kingdom, Isi Alangwa South. Where we are standing is the land given to Life ND program to build the cassava processing industry for the incubators in my community. My name is Hope uh, Chinene, an incubator uh, of Life N under the Menem Global Farm. And I would say that uh, it is a great opportunity for me to be an incubator and uh, also be trained uh, on cassava processing. We are all incubators of Life N. We resume training in this uh, AGG farm since November and up to this moment we've been training for some months and we believe the training we are acquiring, we are going to use it to train others in future. We are incubator of Life ND under Blessed Mapa Farm, Poetry Farm. It came also up by community. We appreciate the opportunity of Life ND given to us to go to be trained under poultry farm with Blessed Mampa farm. We are the incubators in Life ND here in Ume's community and uh, this is our incubation center in Vaughan Foods here in Osioma local government. And uh, we want to thank Life ND for the opportunity they've given to us to be part of this project. Really, it's very inspiring and we've learned a lot and uh, the company have helped us to acquire more skills in cassava processing and even from the production stage to the processing level in starch, flour and uh, gary processing also. So I want to thank Life Endy for that opportunity. When we wonder how Adia Life Endy was able to scale through the holders of land accessibility for the project. The SPC and his team for that gave a clear and detailed insight of how it was achieved. Um, we, we've had little, of, little challenges in, in executing this project, which is the land availability. If we had gotten land made available or donated as we envisage, the project would have done far better than we are doing at present. However, we will be able to, with the help of the state government, especially the executive government of the state, who has um, personally uh, done a lot to ensure that we get enough land to work with. If you look at the present places we are, we are doing what we call land development for, for cassava production, the state gave us 15 hectares at, at Sulu Games Village where we've done some level of um, uh, development. We've been able to, we are almost about planting uh, cassava uh, for cassava production. So these are the few challenges we've had and by God's we've had a means of um, overcoming them. Um, but in, in other agro-community areas, we'll, we'll be doing well and they will also be having very good cooperative and very good uh, understanding from our incubators who are the farmers, the already established farmers that we will get to help us train our incubators to enable them to uh, get capacitated to start their own agro businesses and engagement. Uh, though we are having also having some challenges, um, we've been to some states and uh, some communities where we explained the project objective, what we intend to do, how we want to, you know, make impact on their life. But they keep on reminding us that, uh, they, you know, in the past, projects have come, gave such level of promises, done such level of uh, engagement, and they donated their lands or committed to it, but at the end of the day, they didn't see uh, the project did not keep to their promises. But um, I'll, we try as much as possible to reassure them that this is a different uh, project altogether. This is an IFAD funded project and IFAD funded um, activity. The loan has been collected, the funds are there at the Federal Ministry of um, Finance. And as we go along, such funds will be released to carry out these activities. And by God's grace, if God keeps us alive and the economy is stable, as much as we can make impacts, definitely we will do what we can to do. No doubt, it will be pertinent to reveal the areas of agriculture this project specializes. 
So, for clarity purpose and to maintain the blueprint of a life ND project, these areas was focused on with full dedication. Yes, yes, we are working on four different agro, agro uh, commodities. We are working on cassava, cassava production, processing and marketing. We are working on oil palm processing and marketing. We are working on rice production, processing and marketing. We are also working on poultry production and marketing. These are the areas, areas of uh, agro commodities that we are working on. No doubt, in achieving any success in a huge project like this, one must agree that teamwork must come to play. A careful look into the organogram and team task synergy of Abia Life ND will give you a deep breath of how this success story was achieved. Yeah, yeah, I think I've, I've got one of the best set of uh, staff as we speak, which you can also find out independently. Abia State runs first in terms of the six, um, the six states within the Niger Delta that this project is intervening. And we are not ranking first because we are Abia State or we are Gosso State, because uh, we have been able to work hard as individuals, as staff of the project to, to be able to achieve on this. At all levels of the components, Followed, always um, uh, scored, uh, done the best in terms of uh, doing what is planned and doing what is asked for us to do. Now, let's focus on the team players of Dr. Roland Unizu, the state project coordinator of Abia Life ND projects. These are the think tank that complements the efforts of the SPC. The first point of contact is the State Rural Institution Gender and Youth Officer, Anthony Mombialo. He gave an insight of his contribution to the Abia Life and the Success Story. My department for what the company we call Component 1.4, Rural Institution Setting. So that is a place that when you look at the project, who are concerned, the project is concerned about its sustainability. When we have concluded here, the project believes that this problem, the project should be sustained at the community level. So on that, then we form institutions or build institutions around the project to make sure that uh, the community can analyze it, the community uh, own it and can uh, effectively uh, the Abia State Life ND Procurement Officer, Kelechi Oyemechi, also gave an account of how he was able to manage his office despite the heat of the COVID 19 pandemic. COVID set us back a lot. We are trying to cover those periods. That affected us in procurement department in the sense that procurement is geared procurement is geared towards getting the materials for the project to roll on. And it has the definite procedure. Like when you start one procedure there, this one will be done in two weeks time, this one will be done in three days time, this one will be done in four days time. But the COVID has intervened that uh, we cannot complete the procurement process at the right defined periods. Yes, we have a family, not a, 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 a project, we have a family project. So every member of the staff takes this project as a family project. And that has given us a leverage to overcoming the, 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 the hiccups of the, the COVID uh, period. The Abia Life ND State Project Monitoring and Evaluation Officer, Obuna Azubike, on inquiry from him, also hinted on his role of the success story. The system assists um, the management in making sure that. Um, that the, the whole departments are on track. Because when you come into any organization, you find out that the implementation 
you know, is quite different from what has been you know, laid down in terms of theoretical aspect of uh, you know, carrying out the work. So the, it is the duty of the MOE system to make sure that every department is on track, is not uh, being out of uh, what you should be doing. And where there are gaps, you know, we will assist making sure that uh, everybody comes back in order to achieve the set objectives and goals. So this is a clearing house where the process, get the incubators, get the incubators, and the established incubation centers, and all the rules of engagement, and sign of MOUs, they revolve around this office, even the logistics, yeah, the process, and for years, in the logistics. To date, we've been frequenting each of these incubation centers to, to assess level of um, Activities in terms of training and building the capacity of the tra of the incubators. The peak of the first batch of the agro empowerment training by the Abia Life MD climaxed on Monday, 24th May 2021. The beneficiaries were given check, which is in line with the project's blueprint. Some of the beneficiaries expressed joy of being part of the project. <laughs> Go ahead and multiply. Yeah. There are more people in the community that may be inspired by your success. God bless you. I want to thank you so much. My very self. Uh, I would say that I lost hope when my husband got involved in a ghastly motor accident. I didn't have anybody to look up to. We've gone to so many places to look for help and hope. Help and hope has come today. Thank you so much for making us millionaires. I will pray that this hand we have used today to uphold us will never go down. A lot of people mock us that we have been going on this training without any expectation. But today, today, our heart is full of joy. I, 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 like, I, like, I like words to express how I feel today. This is the officer that was really on site and captured the whole world, the baseline of rain before we can have anything. Go on with that project. I work with him. But no project can take off, can be flagged off without the KMCO. He has to capture the, what we call the baseline of rain, the status quo on the ground before we can have to build on that site. I also work with my colleague, Mr. Gender, the state rural institution, youth and gender officer. He is the one, he is the, he, he, he is the one that, first of all, liaises with the community, our uh, host community, before I can move in with KMCU, my SPC. Generally, I work with all the project officers pushing. The mandate of empowerment of our communities. That mandate is achieved. I've been working very harmoniously. He's a man that has, uh, he, he will always like me to deliver. Based on that, because of his uh, personal drive to make sure that everybody delivers his or her duty timely, we've been able to work. Very well with him. He's a motivator, he will always motivate you, he will always like you to deliver promptly. He doesn't have an he, he doesn't like to accept no as an answer. If you look at the people that work with you, you discover a high powered men of activity in this office. Look at uh, the admin and logistics. There's nothing you do that has no logistics. Work with him. My KMCO. He is the knowledge management officer. I work with him to capture all this in his data bank. We have all this information, all these activities are captured in his data bank. The rural infrastructure officer that seems to build the poultry cluster or land development. He is very intelligent and he objective. He does not accept average. What he accepts is that, that he must be perfect in that setting like that. 
he works very hard. And, and that is why we are leading. He is an educated scholar. He preaches a capacity builder. He's somebody you can work with. I am telling you, if you, if you don't want to let you must stand under him. You must stand. You know, he can walk and work in the night in party with nobody overriding. And whenever you are doing work, he gives and party if you are walking in that kind of spirit, you become his friend. He hates lousiness and he works very hard to make sure that our team is going up on the project. The project, we have a family project. So every member of the staff takes this project as a family project. And that has given us a leverage to overcoming in the, 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 the hiccups of the, the COVID period. I think he has not been found wanting in any of his duties or obligations. And he has been able so far, he has been able to coordinate all the departments. And as I speak to you, I'll tell you that Abia is amongst there are six um, FR states you know, participating in this project. We also have um, three NDDC states. But amongst all these nine states, especially the six FR states, Abia is the rated number one. Yeah, yeah, I think I've I've got one of the best set of um, staff as we speak, which you can also find out independently. Abia State runs first in terms of the six um, the six states within the Niger Delta that this project is intervening. And we are not ranking first because we are Abia State or we are Gonzo State, because uh, we have been able to work hard as individuals, as staff of the project to, to be able to achieve on this. At all levels of the components, we've always um, uh, scored, uh, done the best in terms of uh, doing what is planned and doing what is asked for us to do. And uh, by God's grace, if uh, God keeps us alive and the, co the economy is stable as much as we can make impact, definitely we will do what we do. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you.